for taking the shahada. And he was standing there, he says, raise your finger. Now read. I know you'd like to see this video one day. So he had to recite. Here's the verse of Rajam. In the Torah, the punishment for zina, whether you're married or unmarried, the same law, is Rajam, stoning to death. So when he recited that verse, then they started to stammer. Well, 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 you know. When the small people committed zina, we had to stone them to death. But when the big men committed zina, we had to get them off. So we had to come up with a solution. So we came up with a solution. We changed the law, put a new law. The Prophet ﷺ then ordered the two people to be stoned to death. And they were stoned to death. This was the first time in maybe centuries that the Jews were see, seeing their law being enforced before their eyes. It had not been enforced for so long. Here was evidence as dazzling as the sunshine this man is indeed. A true prophet of Allah. Allah is waiting. Will you accept him? Yes or no? In the next session, we'll come to, come to this, this part of the subject. Then they decided to conspire to destroy Islam. And when the evidence was there plain and clear, so it could be shown to them on Judgment Day, then Allah shut the door to mercy to them. This is the next session. He did a number of things. In the Quran, Allah speaks about it as Naskh. Abrogation, cancellation. Number one, he changed the Qibla. When he changed the Qibla, he didn't do it part-time, you know. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that Qibla, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, this Qibla. No. The old Qibla is now cancelled, abrogated, finished. Replaced completely and totally by a new Qibla. The old Qibla was Jerusalem. The new Qibla is not Washington. A new Qibla is Makkah. The old law of fasting is now cancelled, abrogated. Replaced with a new law of fasting. And we like the new law of fasting. <laughs> because dawn to sunset. No food, no drink. And during the night we can go to our wives. So there are smiles in Medina with this new law of fasting. But then, a third Naskh. It's there in the Quran. The Quran says one thing, but the Hadith says another. The Quran says that the new law of fasting is a public flogging. The old law is Mansukh. Mansukh is not an Arab fellow with a shop here in KL. Mansukh means cancelled, abrogated. The old law is Mansukh is replaced with a new law. The old law is Rajam, stoning to death. The new law is a public flogging. I was in the classroom of Tafsir. Molana Zafullah was teaching and he was a very old man and sometimes he used to fall asleep and sometimes I used to fall asleep in the class. <laughs> but this day, I woke up suddenly because he's, he's dealing with Surah to nur and he says there used to be this verse in the Quran. He's quoting hadith. Umar radiallahu ta'ala who is responding. The people are going to say there used to be the verse of Rajam in the Quran, but we no longer see it there. People will say there used to be this verse of Rajam in the Quran, we no longer see it there. So let me explain to you. So I said, what? There used to be a verse in the Quran. It's no longer there. It dropped out. I couldn't say it in the classroom. This sounds like a load of rubbish. I waited until the class was over. And I went to Dr. Ansari's office. 
I said, Molana, this is what they just taught me in the classroom. There used to be a verse of Quran in the uh, verse of uh, Rajam in the Quran is no longer there. So let me explain to you. If they are unmarried, the Quran is applied. Flogging. But if they are married, the Torah is applied. Rajab. Mawlana Fadlur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah said wrong. Sunday wrong. No verse of the Quran has ever been cancelled or abrogated. And when I explained this, Dr. Mahathir was so happy. Dr. Mahathir said to me, but that is also my view. That no verse of the Quran was ever cancelled or abrogated. But I am trying to tell this to the ulama in my country, but they wouldn't listen to me. That's what he said to me. <laughs> And so here you have a situation where the Quran is saying one thing and the Hadith is saying something else and Sahih Hadith. What do you do? What do you do? If you use the wrong methodology, the Zionists are going to pay two people to come to a Sharia court in Egypt to confess zina. And the court is going to have to pronounce Rajam. Because Washington is going to be crying out loud and the New York Times is going to be shouting. And CNN and Al Jazeera, you know their sisters, the two of them, shouting out loud, why don't you enforce the Sharia? Come on, enforce the Sharia. So you're going to have to enforce Rajab. Because that's your methodology. And when you enforce the Rajab, CNN and Al Jazeera are going to capture it. And they're going to play it over and over again ad nauseum in every single television station in the world. And you're going to be more than the laughing stock of the world. Mankind is going to scorn you. Mankind is going to look down upon you. And Israel is going to reap tremendous dividends, publicity against Islam. Here is the... Here is the matter of methodology. No verse of the Quran has been cancelled. None. No verse of the Quran has been abrogated. None. Cancellation and abrogation refers to previous revelations in the previous books, some of which have now been abrogated and replaced with new revelation in the Quran. This brings us to the end of session one. What I have done is to take you out of the touring bus so you can walk around and feel the sun, feel the sun, feel the earth. Eh? On the subject of how important is the subject of Akhiru Zaman? Why did Allah send him, Jibrail alayhi salam, why, as a human being, in this dramatic way? Why? Obviously, it was close to the end of the life of the Prophet If you do the research, you might be able to convincingly declare that this event took place after the farewell pilgrimage and the Prophet returned to Medina. And he now has about 81 days left in his life before he dies. We know that this took place late in his life because when the question was asked, what is Islam? He, he answered one of the things that constitute Islam is Hajj. And he could not have included Hajj until Fatih Makkah. <laughs> okay. So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send Jibreel alayhi salam in this dramatic way? Why these five questions? Why this focus on the Sa'a and the Alamat Sa'a? Why is it that two of the signs are given, but they are so different from each other? <laughs> one is plain and clear, Mubin. The other one, you can't touch it without Ta'wil, interpretation. And then the Quran itself tells us that verses of the Quran are like that. Some are muhkamat, plain and clear, 
but others are more to share behind. What about this punctuation problem? Are you convinced with the present punctuation? That only Allah knows the meaning of the mutashabihat, not even the messenger of Allah knows the meaning of one part of the Quran? Or do you believe that this punctuation is wrong? And if the rasikhuna fil ilm can understand the verses of the Quran which are mutashabihat, what is the methodology? The totality of the Quran, we believe in all of it. And therefore you cannot understand the part without reference to the whole. And so the methodology is take all the verses of the Quran on that particular subject. And that is not easy. That takes time and effort. And then try to bind them together as an unorganic whole. Non-contradictory, harmonious whole. And to bind them all together as a harmonious whole is not only an intellectual effort, but also requires something called, what was the word? Insight. Yes, this is an insight seminar. Insight. Sharifa is smiling now. <laughs> insight. Every scientist knows about insight. It's not sold in the stock market. If Allah puts noor in your heart, you can get insight. But to get that insight, you have to love the Quran. And if you visit the Quran once a year, you know in Ramadan, and for the rest of the year, you don't have time. You're not going to get the insight. You must recite the Quran cover to cover. And when you finish, you start again. And when you finish, you start again. And you teach your children. The best way to teach them is to turn off the television. But better than that, but better than that is to take the television and throw it out of the window. <laughs> Teach your children to recite the Quran, cover to cover. And when you finish, start again. And when you finish, start again. If you continuously recite the Quran, then the Quran will one day become your teacher. Every time you recite the Quran, the, the Quran will teach you something new. Oh, but I've been reciting this verse so many times. I can't remember how many times, but now for the first time I'm seeing something new in it. Inside. Inside. If you use the proper methodology, you get a system of meaning, but Dr. Ansari speaks of the system of meaning of the Quran. And then you integrate the hadith, and then you're able to recognize the fabricated hadith. Important, because ilmu akhir the man has time bombs in it, fabricated the hadith. One last word, uh, you can pick up your copies over here, Asad and Yusuf Ali, Pixar is also good. But I found to my amazement when I was preparing for this seminar, that there are so many instances in which Muhammad Asad is deficient in his translation and explanation of verses of the Quran pertaining to Akhir Ozan. It's not simply that Muhammad Asad rejects belief in the return of Jesus alayhi salam, considers him dead. That's not only the... There are more things in it than that. Mm -hmm. So you'd want to take a number of translations and check each. If you are French speaking, we have French speaking here. Muhammad Hamidullah has done a translation of the Quran and there are other translations of the Quran. This book, Quranic Foundations and Structure of Muslim Society, written by my teacher in two volumes, is now being printed. Should be out of the printry in another two or three weeks, inshallah, and it will soon be available to you. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samir alim wa tub'alina ya mulana inna ka anta tawab rahim bi rahmatika ya arham rahimin. Components, people, events of akhiru zaman. 
the ashrat of the sa, the signs of the last hour. When will these signs commence? And we turn to uh, number five, which is Surah to Muhammad, verse number 18. There we are. There are those who are sleepwalking through history. <laughs> Their hearts are sealed. And they're waiting. The hour would come upon them suddenly. Sometime in the distant future. So let them know. Some of the early signs have already appeared. For Kaja Ashrat to her. Have already come. The Quran is referring to the first sign of Akhiru Zaman. And it does so in a surah which is named Muhammad. Because he, Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, his advent represents the first sign of Akhiru Zaman. He raised, he raised his hands like this, showing two fingers. And he said, Ana was kahatain. I and the last hour are like these two fingers. And so the sa'a or the last hour or akhiru zaman kajaa ashratuha has now commenced with the advent of Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And this sign, namely the advent of the last prophet and the revelation of the last book, the last prophet, the last book, and the last age, Akhir zaman This last prophet and this last book have a role to play in Akhir zaman It is belief in this last prophet and belief in this last book, which is going to be the Furqan, which will distinguish truth from falsehood. Guidance from misguidance. If you hold on to this prophet, and if you hold on to this book, you can survive. Akhir zaman But if you hold on to something else like CNN, or the New York Times, you will dance to tunes that you're going to regret one day. <laughs> the Quran speaks about another sign. And this is number six. It says, Iktarabati sa'ah wan al qamar. The last hour has drawn close. And the moon has been split asunder. If you go to my book on uh, Gog and Magog, I have discussed this sign in detail and the evidence in the Sirah, the visual evidence in the Sirah from sources that are impeachable, unimpeachable. Mm -hmm. That they actually saw the moon, one half of it on this side of the mountain and one half on the, on the other side of the mountain. Despite this, there are those who are of the view 
I think Muhammad Asad is one of them. <laughs> that this is a sign of the last day which is going to recur at some time. But to say that Akhir Zaman is still to come, when the Quran itself has declared two signs already, is wrong. Akhir Zaman is already here. Who are the major actors of Akhir Zaman? I want you to hold on to these two verses of the Quran carefully. Eh? Who are the major actors of Akhir Zaman? Is there a central figure around which the entire subject revolves of Akhir Zaman? Yes, there is. And for that, we go to number seven. And uh, it is Surah Zukhruf. And now we have a problem of punctuation. I told you earlier, he would, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, would recite. And they would write down the scribes. And they would then read out and he would listen to confirm. So all that he is confirming is the pronunciation of the word. Not the Arab, the Fatha, the Kasra, the Dhamma. These are human work to put in the Arab, human beings. And human beings can make errors. And here there appears to be one such possibility. وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ Ain Lam Mim can be written as Ilm or as Alam. But for some mysterious reason, nearly every single copy of the Quran that you lay hands on today insists that the punctuation is ilm. And when you use the translation of ilm, knowledge, it now raises the possibility that the pronoun wa inna hu, hu, the pronoun could refer to something else or someone else. But if you use the word alam, alam means sign, sign. Ilm is knowledge. When you use the word alam, now it has become plain as daylight. When you study the context of the passage, and that's your homework, you'll go to Surah to Zukhruf, and you'll go to the entire passage. And uh, you, you can, are you taking the copies of the Quran? Make sure you take them with you. I don't want them sitting there. If you don't want to buy them, just return them afterwards. So just put them there. Uh, the who or the pronoun refers to Nabi Isa alayhi salam. That's the context. Wa inna who? Surely he, la alamun lissa'a, is a sign, the mother of all signs. The sign, as they say in French, we have some French speaking people here, paraxilos. The sign paraxilos of El Muakhir of Zaman is Nabi Isa alayhi salam. Therefore, do not be in doubt concerning this sign of the hour about Nabi Isa alayhi salam. This is the only straight way. How can he function as a sign of Akhir zaman In what way can he function 
as a sign of Akhiru Zaman. He's not in the world. And he's not been in the world for a long time. Certainly not in my lifetime. Not in your lifetime. Where is he? If he is to function as a sign of Akhiru Zaman, in what capacity? How? It is here in dealing with components of Akhiru Zaman that we come to an extremely important subject. This is the crux of components, this one. So careful. We go to Surah uh, Nisa, where the Jews are boasting. And if this was not in the Quran, they would address me for anti Semitism. But it's there in the Quran. Wakaulihim. And they boasted. Inna qatalna al Masiha Isa ibn Maryama. Rasulullah. We have certainly killed the Messiah. Al-Masih, the Messiah. The Jews were waiting on the Messiah to come. The Quran refers to Nabi Isa alayhi salam as the Messiah, Al-Masih. We're not so much concerned with the literal meaning of the word Masih, the one who is anointed. Dr. Omar Zaid will have more to speak about that. We're more concerned with the function of the Messiah who is, according to Nabi Muhammad والسلام, to rule the world. He would be Hakim, one who rules. And we're not talking about midtown Manhattan. No. Ruling the world is not to be meant, not to be understood as ruling every square inch of downtown Chicago. No. Or KLCC. KLCC means Kuala Lumpur city center where you have the Twin Towers. Ruling the world means establishing a rule which cannot be rivaled by any other rule or by any other combinations of rules. Cannot be challenged, cannot be threatened, cannot be rivaled. That's a ruling power. And Nabi Isa alayhi salam is going to come back according to Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam as Hakim, one who will rule. Hakimun Adil, someone who will rule with justice. The most powerful voice in the world to prophesy the return of the true Messiah, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, is the voice of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. But what does the Quran say? We have killed him, the Messiah. They did not recognize him as Messiah. No. Some of them did. Some of them did, but the establishment, the rabbis, the ulama, they rejected him. Why? They said, when he's a bastard. His mother gave birth, she wasn't married. He's a bastard. And a bastard cannot be the Messiah. And there are many other reasons. Uh, I have a book entitled The Religion of Abraham and the State of Israel, a view from the Quran. It's out of print. <laughs> we have to get it reprinted. But if you go online, you can read the book, which deals with the subject in greater detail. And they refer to him as Jesus, the son of Mary. Because he didn't have a father. And they refer to him as Rasulullah. This is called sarcasm. Sarcastic language. We've killed him. This fellow who claims to be the Messiah. This one fellow who claims to be the messenger of Allah. This fellow who doesn't have a, a father. He's the son of his mother and so on. Sarcastic language. We've killed him. And when they saw him die the way he died... Before their very eyes, he was crucified. 
Before their very eyes, they saw him give up the ghosts. But the Torah says, whosoever dies like that is the cursed of Allah. So he couldn't be the Messiah. Plain as daylight. But Allah, Allah responds in the Quran and says, no. They did not kill him. No, they did not crucify him. What is sulm? What is crucifixion in the Quran? You do not take a word which is in the Quran and look for its meaning outside of the Quran. Huh? Where did you learn that methodology from? Disneyland? If you want to understand the meaning of a word in the Quran, don't go to the Vatican. Go to the Quran. Go to all the verses of the Quran which deal with the subject of crucifixion. And you will see that every time that the Quran deals with the subject of crucifixion, it is crucifixion until you die. Death. Death. That's crucifixion. When Pharaoh says, I'm going to cut off your hand and feet from opposite sides and throw you, put you up on the palm tree, it's crucified. Huh? And after you're crucified, he put you down and you start hopping away on your one foot. You're crucified yet? No, you're not yet crucified. So don't tell me that once you're put on the cross, you're crucified. Because I'll buy a one-way ticket for you to Disneyland. That's not crucifixion. Crucifixion is when you are crucified until you die. That's crucifixion. And Allah says he was not crucified. He was not killed. He was not crucified. And Allah goes on to say, and this is the book in which I have dealt with the subject. There's a chapter in this book on that subject, Jerusalem and the Quran, which explains what happened. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ Allah made it appear that who was crucified when he was not crucified. Well, then what happened? In uh, number nine, please. In two places in the Quran, Allah speaks about Nabi Isa alayhi salam speaking while he was in the cradle as a baby. Babies normally don't talk in the cradle, are they? Do they? No. For a baby in the cradle to talk, it will be miraculous. So when the Quran says, Fil Mahdi wa Kahlan, it means speaking miraculously on both occasions. So speaking miraculously while you are a baby and speaking miraculously when you are an adult. So when he returned to the Holy Land as an adult and he's speaking, that is not miraculously. In other words, the Quran is telling us that he will speak miraculously on two occasions. He will speak miraculously in the grave, as a cradle, as a baby, and he will speak miraculously as an adult, meaning he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's not coming back as some kind of a spirit. He's coming back as a human being who will speak. But Allah says, Kullu nafsin za'ikatul maut. Every soul must taste death. And once you die, that's it. You're not coming back. Not even if you are prime minister, you can't come back. Because barzakh, bars away. Okay? Good. So they did not kill him. 
they did not crucify him. Walakin shubbiha lahum. Thus was it made to appear unto them. Is that all that the Quran says? It was made to appear to them that they had succeeded.